Okay, so we left off with this formula coming from a Venn diagram. So it's important to, again, recognize this letter at the end, this event at the end is your condition. That's what you already know. So that's restricting your sample space to just that set of outcomes. And within that set of outcomes, you want the probability that this first one happened. So in a Venn diagram, that's just the part that's actually the overlap or the shared part. Um, so that's good, good kind of to know. Um, we're going to use a little bit of that to um, talk about independence. Remember, two events are independent if uh, one event's knowing one event doesn't impact the other event. There are two ways to prove independence. Um, one is, um, again, to show that the probability of A times the probability of B equals the intersection of the two events. If you can do that, um, and again, either direction, um, that, that works. The other way is to show that the probability of A given B is the same as the probability of A, meaning that this conditional probability isn't different than the in original probability of the event by itself. So both of these are formulas that we looked at a little bit, um, <clears throat> and so it's important to be able to uh, use them if they ever ask you to prove independence. So I'm going to come up here now and I'm going to go over a couple of these comments up here. I'm going to short, sort of show you how to use the Venn diagram to do some of these things. So um, if I want the complement of A, um, really a, a, another way to describe that is any event not in A. And that a Venn diagram would literally be me coloring everything outside of my little A squiggle. So notice that part of B is, is not in A, um, and then there's all sorts of other stuff out there. So that, that would be the complement of A, everything outside of A. Uh, and a, a faster way to say that would be um, if I ask you the complement of B, a uh, fast way to say that is, oh, just not, not B. That's just a faster way. So this I'm going to kind of paint uh, down here. So the complement of A or the complement of B really means the union of those two events. So the complement of A I will do in green. And remember, the complement of A is just all of this stuff that's outside of A. So I'm going to color it, everything outside of A, I'm coloring it all. There it is. Color, color, color. Very good. Keeping in the lines. Very pretty. Um, and then I'm going to color the complement of B, uh, everything outside of B in red. So now I want everything outside of B. So outside of B is all of this stuff is outside of B. And out here is outside of B. This is outside of B. Here we go. So because it's the union, I take everything in both green, everything in red, and plus anything that's green and red. So you'll notice that in this, uh, it is including everything. Um, this is everything except the intersection. Um, that's the only thing that wouldn't be in this particular set. Everything except um, the intersection of A and B. All right, so now if I come down here, I erase all my pretty colors uh, and I switch my colors. I'm going to do purple now. If I want the complement of A and B, uh, or sorry, the complement of A and the complement of B, I now want the intersection of those two. So everything not in A, I'm just going to draw these cool vertical segments. That's everything that's not in A. Purple vertical segments. And now I'm going to do everything that's not in B with horizontal. So I'm not in B, so I've got to make sure I don't get any of this cool B figure shape. There we go. Um, and then the intersection of that is everything that is shaded both blue and purple. That's what that means. So everything that's uh, shaded both blue and purple is everything out here. So notice that that is everything except the union. Kind of crazy, huh? Okay, perfect. Now we're going to come down. I'm going to erase my really messed up thing, and we're going to put some numbers in here. I don't know what events A and B are. We can make them up anything you want. They could be whether you're left-handed or right-handed, or whether you have uh, brown hair or green eyes. I don't it really doesn't matter. But I'm just going to put some numbers in here. So now I'm, I'm going to put a 20 out here, an 8 in the overlap, a 12 over here, and a 5 down here. And we are going to also fill in our table. So it, sometimes your data is in a two-way table. Sometimes it's like the problem above about rap music and alternative. 
and sometimes it's in a Venn diagram. So we've got to be able to handle kind of um, all of those things at once. So I believe I had 12 here. So uh, this two-way table should match all this information. So this box is A and B. It's both things happening. That's what's inside there. That's eight. Um, this box is things that are in B, but not in A. And so if I'm in B, but not in A, it's that 12 right there. And notice that B then has a total of 20. And if I look up here, my B circle has a total of 20. This box would be everything that's in A but not in B, and that's this group right here. So there's 20 right there. Again, if I add those up, I get 28, and that's total for A. Notice A has a total of 28. Um, and then this is things that are not in B or A, and that's just this group of five out here. And if I add those up, I get 25. So 25 things should not be in B. There's 20 that's not in B. There's five. Those add up. Um, this adds up to 17, and then I should be able to get um, a total of 45 in both of these total columns and if I add all these numbers up it should add up to 45. Um, so now if I want to find uh, probability of A given B from the table so I'm giving you B here's the table there's B 20 so this calculation probability of A given B is only out of 20 because B only has 20 and of that group I want to know in, in the table what part of this is A well there it is 8 out of 20 um, if I want to calculate the probability of B given A now my given is A so I just look at my A's there's 28 A's and of those 28 how many are B's 8 8 out of 28 and if I want to talk about independence um, I would do something crazy by uh, uh, this probability of A in general is equal to 28 out of 45. Um, and if these two answers are the same, then they would be considered um, independent, but they are not the same. Uh, this is about 40%, I think, and this is going to be about 50, 60%, 60%. So they're not the same, so these would not be independent. Um, another way to do that would be to say, um, look at the probability of A. I'm going to also look at the probability of B. In this case, probability of B is 20 out of 45. And the intersection of A and B is right there. It's 8 out of 45. So if 20 out of 45 times 28 out of 45, so if these two individual probabilities multiply together to equal the overlap, which is 8 out of 45, then they would be considered um, independent. So you would, those are not going to equal each other, but that's, that's how you would go about proving independence uh, from there. All right, that was a much shorter video, and I hope you enjoyed a very rapid review of all things probability, and also tree diagrams. I think we'll get to those. We'll do those separate. Okay, have a pleasant day.